welcome to the Gadgets and Gizmo show with me, Sadat Sharma. And this is a special episode. Why? Because right behind there, we are at the CES 2015 in Las Vegas. Check out what's there new on the show this week. Connected cars, 4K UHD TVs, robots, Internet of Things, curvy smartphone technology and much more. Technology and Las Vegas, a couple which has been in a relationship for over four decades now. The Consumer Electronics Show or CES, the child of this relationship not only grows bigger but better every year. Now two things you can always expect at CES, crowds by the thousands and all the big wigs from Sony to Samsung to Panasonic to Toshiba with some pretty amazing displays. The theme of CES 2015 though, connected cars, some more connected cars and yes, internet of things to go with that. So let's get this party started, shall we? And right behind me are the heavenly gates where it all starts, the CES 2015. This year, the Consumer Electronics Show took a leap of faith in its own terms, moving away from the big stream televisions and making way for the ultimate gadget convergence. The result? Connected cars. Connected cars were big for the year 2015. All the big names of the automotive industry were present at CES 2015 to showcase their concepts of connected cars. From Ford to Volkswagen, from Mercedes-Benz to Audi. Everyone was present at this year's convention. Ford has pioneered the way we see connected cars in modern times, especially for the masses. You could see all the sophisticated gadgetry in automobiles, but that was for the luxury market and to be more precise for the elites. Ford made way for connected cars that could reach to the masses. The first association with Microsoft for the Ford Sync was a big hit worldwide and even in India it was much appreciated. Sync was introduced in India with the Echo Sport. Then in the year 2014 they got Sync and AppLink with their new Fiesta in India, which we even showed you on gadgets and gizmos. But at CES 2015, Ford came out with Sync 3.0 and AppLink for its new cars that will come in the year 2015. So we have with us uh, Don Butler from Ford who's going to tell us about AppSync 3.0. Yeah. So Sync 3, uh, we're excited to be featuring it here at CES and it is a system that is more simple, more intuitive, more responsive. For instance, we move to what's called capacitive touch on the screen, yeah. so we're able to detect multi-touch gestures, so you can pinch to zoom, you can expand to uh, contract, you can swipe, things that you would be accustomed to doing on a tablet, for instance. The other thing with Sync is we've improved and enhanced the voice interaction. So, for example, previously, you had to remember a specific set of commands in order to, say, play a specific artist or song. You'd have to say play, artist, strokes. Now you can just say play the strokes or a particular song, play this song. And just deal with the mobility challenges we face. That was not all. Ford also is concentrating on 25 mobility challenges that commuters and consumers face worldwide. And at CES 2015, they showcased how India is a key market for them. Imagine what people in Mumbai, India face every day. More than 18 million people live in Mumbai. And its population density is 17 times greater than here in Las, uh, in Las Vegas. There were four mobility challenges that were based out of India in cities like Mumbai, Delhi, Chennai and Bangalore. While Ford was trying to be more practical in their approach at CES 2015 when it came to connected cars, there were companies that were giving a sneak peek into not so distant future. One of them was Mercedes-Benz. Their autonomous self-driving luxury on wheels was a showstopper for sure. Take a look at it. Mercedes-Benz was not the only one which came out with a self-driving car. Audi actually had one that drove by itself from San Francisco to Las Vegas to attend the CES 2015. Meet the Audi A7 autopiloted car. 
Volkswagen also showcased how connected hatchbacks are going to look like in the future. They had two major showcases at CES 2015. One was the self-parking green fuel run. Volkswagen Golf that could park itself in a garage and find its way out as well. And another one was the Golf R Touch with a dashboard that came right out of Starship Enterprise. Connected cars were big this time at CES and there is no doubt about that. And one thing is for sure, in a future not so distant, a connected car would be one ultimate gadget to own. Let's move away from connected cars and tell you what the big tech companies were up to at CES 2015. CES 2015 was not all about connected cars, it did have its share of mobile phones too. One that was really interesting was the second generation LG G Flex. We saw LG and Samsung play with the idea of curved display on their 4K OLED TVs last year. Then LG came out with the G Flex, a phone that had a curved screen. This was a smartphone that was supposed to bend and bring curves back in fashion. The G Flex 2 has slim bezels, curvy designs and buttons on the back. The G Flex 2 is smaller than its predecessor. It has a screen measuring 5.5 inches instead of the 6 inch display on the 2014 model. LG G Flex 2 comes with a special coating on the back cover. LG calls it self-healing back cover because the materials used in the coating can automatically repair very minor scratches. LG G Flex 2 sports a 5.5 inch 1080p OLED display, runs on Android 5.0 Lollipops, sports a 13 megapixel camera with the optical image stabilization that has been upgraded and at its heart is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 810 chipset which has 8 cores. Four of these are ARM Cortex A57 cores clocked at 2 GHz. The phone comes in two variants with 16 GB internal storage and with 32 GB internal storage. The first G Flex was exorbitantly priced and the G Flex 2 might get a price cut. And when it lands in India, this could be one of the better phones to come in the year 2015. Only if LG gets the price right. Now smartphone was not the only thing that LG showcased at CES 2015. The latest wearable tech, the G Watch R, was also put up at the convention. G Watch R is a fusion of classic style and the latest wearable technology. G Watch R sports a modern prestige design with perfect circular look and watch face with a 1.3 inch OLED display. It has 410 mAh battery, an always on display, and is certified water and dust resistant. G Watch R is compatible with any smartphone that runs Android 4.3 or higher. The processor inside this wearable tech is a 1.2 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon 400 and has 4 GB of internal memory and 512 MB of RAM. This wearable tech can give some serious competition to the Moto 360 in the year 2015. Panasonic showed off a concept of their new in-flight entertainment system at the Consumer Electronics Show this year. If connected cars were on everyone's mind at CES 2015, aviation was also on the mind of some. Panasonic's focus was on the latest in-flight information technology concepts and comprehensive IFEC solutions. For the concept, Panasonic was heavily dependent on Android. The Android-based system looked like a tablet placed right in front of you. Though the connected in-flight entertainment system is not new to Panasonic, but the new features that Panasonic included in the seatback system was that it will now automatically recognize passengers as they board the aircraft and pull in information like movie selection which they have pre-selected. Innovations like these are all set to pave way for the connected aircraft revolution. And with that, it's time for us to take a very small break on the show, but you guys don't go anywhere because there's a lot more technology action right from CES 2015 coming your way on the other side. On the other side of the break, virtual reality, drones, Internet of Things and much more from CES 2015.
connected cars, smartphones, wearables and connected aircrafts were not the only things that were setting the trend at CES 2015. Virtual reality had its own highlights. Oculus Rift, which is now a Facebook company that started it all with virtual reality, saw many takers at CES. And one company that was showing it off was Samsung. Samsung's Oculus powered Gear VR, that will cost about $200 as an accessory to the Galaxy Note 4, wooed many that attended the CES this year. This new addition to the Samsung family comes with a 5.7-inch Quad HD Super AMOLED display with 2560 by 1440 resolution, while the optical lens included offers a 96-degree field of view. Not to mention, the device contains a whole bunch of sensors to heighten the experience including an accelerator, gyrometer, geomagnetic and proximity sensors. The Gear VR took a while coming and did have some teething problems on its way. That said, it did arrive and it also made an appearance at CES. You will definitely need a Samsung Galaxy Note 4 to use it. Well, Gear VR is something that will revolutionize how we watch videos and play games on our smartphones for sure. Drones sure did capture imagination and literally took the camera to the skies in the year 2014. At the 2015 Consumer Electronics Show featured a couple of interesting ones. Intel invited the winner of its Make It Wearable competition, which it launched a year ago at CES 2014 on stage to demo the Nixie wearable drone. Can we see it live? I think we should give it a try. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> the drone attaches to the wrist and launches into the air to record what you're doing with a bird's eye view. It detaches itself from the wrist by flexing its limbs which doubles up as propellers. The design was the winner of Intel's 2014 Make It Wearable contest. It uses an Edison chip to track where you are and records you with its inbuilt camera, while also avoiding potential obstacles in the path. It includes a processor, Bluetooth low energy radio and an engine that is dedicated to working out different sporting activities. Another interesting drone at the CES 2015 was from the only Latvian company present at the convention called AirDog. AirDog was also announced the winner of the best robo drone title and landed second in the best CES 2015 awards overall poll. It started as a Kickstarter project and it is one drone that follows you and films you as you go on an adventurous ride. One thing is for sure, that drones of the future will sure be intelligent and have a brain of their own. It's not like there were no 4K television magic this time around in CES. Companies like Samsung, Sharp, Sony and Panasonic all showcased their display technologies at the convention. But the one that impressed us was from Sony. They came out with the world's thinnest 4K TV and there were a lot of oohs and ahs at the remarkably silhouette design. It really is a wonder of modern engineering. Sony's new XBR X900C and X910C Bravia 4K Ultra HD TV models feature an ultra-thin floating style that is just 4.9mm at its thinnest and nearly frameless shape can be mounted right up against the wall as well. The 3840 by 2160 displays are backed by the new 4K processor X1, which Sony says allows for improved color, clarity and contrast, while also enhancing 4K content streams. 
Sony gave up on the idea of developing their own smart TV interface and just went the Android way. The Android TV operating system to Sony's 2015 line of Bravia 4K sets with voice search via the included remote is much easier and seamless. The 4K UHD TVs will be available this spring, although no pricing details were announced. Let's just assume expensive for the higher end models and hopefully well worth it. Internet of Things is a concept that we have been hearing about for some time now and the idea of smart homes is not far off. Many household smart devices were showcased at CES this year. LG's HomeBot was one of them and it manages to deliver on key pieces of the connected home mantra. HomeBot's scheduling functionality is easy to set up on an app. The device includes premium features like two front-facing RF cameras that help it detect dust, two rotating brushes that allow it to pick up particulate matter regardless of which way it's oriented. HomeBot isn't a comprehensive connected home solution but it is a solid start and yes, HomeBot doesn't do stairs. But the cherry on the cake was from a Kickstarter project that is all set to make the movie iRobo come to reality. Meet the best personal assistant ever by a company called RoboBase. Good morning Thomas, time to get up. She's not just a pretty face, she's artificial intelligence. She sees the world the same way we humans do. I just sent the meeting notes to you and Thomas. It can recognize faces, emotions and everyday objects. It also wakes you up and reminds you about the next meeting and she builds up her own map of the house with her navigation and mapping algorithms. This personal assistant is also able to communicate with all your connected devices. And although it's a Kickstarter project, but the company RoboBase is all set to start shipping these personal assistants by Christmas 2015. Cameras were also present at CES 2015 this year and the ones that will be coming to India for sure are from Canon and Nikon. Nikon showcased the Nikon D5500 DSLR at the CES 2015. The Nikon D5500 is a new DSLR with a number of Nikon firsts. It's the first time that the company has featured a touchscreen in such a product and is also the smallest DSLR to date. But that doesn't make it the smallest on the market. The D5500 has a 24.2 megapixel APS-C sensor at its core, with the optical low-pass filter removed for heightened sharpness, alongside the latest XSpeed 4 image processing engine. Add a 39-point autofocus system, improved live view, autofocus, large 3.2-inch LCD screen, up to 5 FPS continuous shooting, Nikon speed light compatibility and there's a lot to love about the Nikon D5500. With the all-new gadgetry in place, the D5500 sure looks like a worthy upgrade to the Nikon D5300. Canon showcased a lot of new compact power shots at the convention. And the top of the stack this year was the 30x optical zoom power shot SX710HS, a megapixel packed update to the last year's admirable SX700HS model. But that's about it as far as it goes. 20.3 megapixel means more pixels, not more. But still, as it builds upon the foundation of one of the top travel zooms available today, it is bound to be a cracker when it lands in stores this February and will cost more than rupees 35,000 when it lands up here for sure. CES 2015 is a place where innovations and technology meets reality and this year's convention sure was diverse. From connected cars to home bots, from internet of things to virtual reality, it had it all. And as always, CES promised one thing that the next level of human evolution will definitely come from technology and Las Vegas is a city that couldn't agree more and these fountains at the Bellagio describe it all. And with that it's time for us to say goodbye on this edition of the Gadgets and Gizmos show. If you have any comments, queries or suggestions, tweet us at HLT Gizmos. You can also email us on htwg at archduck.com. We'll see you same time, same place next week. But for all the news and updates, keep watching Headlines Today.